Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we are going to be looking at the tier list for the characters within the game. Now, as usual, this tier list has been made by my own personal opinions. I have consulted with a few people, but of course, I'm sure characters on this are going to change depending on how you feel about the characters themselves. So, by all means, throw your comments on where you think a character should be moved up or down. Go for it. I mean, this is just a general idea. It's not like there's going to be a character that's in S tier, but they actually belong down in the bottom tier. But anyway, we'll get into it. This list is updated to the point of Pride. So whatever patch that is, I don't know what patch are up to. Whatever patch release Pride, that is what this video is updated to. So yeah, figure it out yourself. So let's get into it. We'll go over the heroes and yeah, why they belong where they do. So starting from the bottom of the list, the Lemon and Herb characters, the characters everyone can handle. We've got Rogar, Tanita, Sharazar, Roland, Sabretooth, Cobalt Spear, Schnee, Grok, Arrakan Spear, Gasser, Ambro, Aratar, Gatekeeper, Infernus, Eraser, Riser, Kashat, Hilia, Tahi, and Akrashat. These characters are the worst of the worst. They are not going to really serve you any purpose except for maybe some funny battles where you can pull off some of these characters the only character that you could possibly move up would be arata because in a barbarian squad he's not completely useless but in a barbarian squad there's so many better characters to use over him that he just is never used there's no point you don't get anything more from a battle with him in it than you would any other barbarian that can just do so much more so yeah, these characters are unfortunately not really going to serve you any purpose. Sabretooth, maybe, if the Children of the Forest get some crazy leadership buff or the, the new Brotherhood they got includes him somehow. I don't know, maybe. And the Kobolds, possibly, when Worm Priest gets his leadership ability. These characters aren't just ranked on their individual ability, but what they can maybe achieve in a team as well so yeah these characters the only reason you'd work on any of these are for hero events so moving up to mild we have the characters that aren't the worst of the worst but you're still very rarely going to find uses for them maybe you can get something out of them but you better save your resources and whatnot for anything above you got pig boy steris Softy, Siegfried, Raspit, Mirrodin, Karana, Kabuto, Damio, Silvermoon, Tiles, Arakan, Axel, Worm Priest, Kobolok, Slinger, Velandar, Troda, Hagram, Angram, Zart, Hound, Succubus, and Abaddon. Now, let's go over some characters that I feel like people would say these belong a bit higher than normal. These two, Abaddon and Succubus, to be honest, Succubus has fallen from grace a tremendous amount. They, she's hardly used in any teams, if any, for that matter. I never see her used anymore. Tournament, anywhere, never. Abaddon, the only place I can see Abaddon serving a purpose, and again, this is from personal experience, is campaign. There are some campaign nodes where with an Abaddon leader and demon team, you can get some use out of them. Late game, though useless mid game maybe again you'd just be wasting resources and time there when you could be working on other characters the dwarves again they are good with Choran. again Choran though is fallen from grace a tremendous amount the only real use you will ever see Choran being is uh being used for is clan wars that's the only place i really see him being used at all He's never in tournaments anymore, never in arena. He's, he's a Clan Wars defense node team. That's about it. Now, the Kobolds here, their use has slightly increased due to the fact that they are being used as a team against Naja. Now, a lot of you are thinking these characters, there's a lot of teams, a lot of teams that can be used against Naja to beat her. This is true. However, when you consider that you can use Kobolds, a relatively useless faction, to be Dark Elves in, say, Clan Wars, for example, you're saving better teams while getting rid of weak characters to get rid of what should be a top-tier team. So their use, these three particularly, have increased. Arakan Axel, a bit of a glass cannon with um, the Blood Emperor team. 
Some people have said Damio belongs a bit higher. I personally don't see it, but I am going to test some things out. So he possibly could be in medium, but personal opinion is Oraheim is a better leader than he is. Silvermoon, she does get used in some Barbarian teams over Rosario. So yeah, she's got some use. Karana, just a good healer. Not the greatest, not the worst. And then yeah, some other characters. So yeah, these characters, some of them, you can actually find some uses. Very small uses within the game. If you've got them, Good for you. If not, you're not you're not going to fall that far behind. So moving up the spice rack into medium, we have the characters that if you've got these, awesome. They're probably going to help you in some way. At the bottom, we have pride and stealthy. Now I've got these two characters here because to be honest, they have potential. They don't currently have a setup. I don't know how to use these heroes. I haven't found anyone that knows how to use them. So personally, I would suggest ignoring this. Because who knows what's going to happen with these two characters. It's too early. We have Phoenix, Balthazar, Maeglin, Mabe, Soothsayer, Drevorad, Cathbad, Argon, Sindario, Idril, Hody, Oraheim, Mizihiku, Cage, Blood Priest, Shadow, Arakan, Guard, Blood Mage, Egnor, Lokia, Drake, Naja. What are these guys' names? The Goblins, Goon, Sweet Voice, Grok, and Prick, or whatever and Choran. So what are we going to mention in here? I've already talked about these two. Lokia, I was actually meant to move down to mild. I didn't update the tier list. Uh, Dark Elves, however, we all know they can be beaten quite easily. It's mainly due to the fact that the AI is horrible in using them. Apart from that, they're okay. They're obviously not anything above medium though. They can just be beaten by so many things. They can take out what was one of the strongest squads in the game, but that's their only only milestone they've ever achieved. Apart from that, they're, they're, uh, they can kind of do okay. They can do so poorly. Their yeah, AI is just horrible. The goblins, they're just so RNG-based, but I've seen them take out so many different teams. People don't really use them because mainly a lot of people don't have the Goblin King maxed out. But their potential is, isn't is horrible. They can do a lot of damage. They can take out a lot of teams. And yeah, Choran, again, fallen a bit from grace. He's only really used in Clan Wars. What else? You've got the, the Undead with Blood Emperor. They're all pretty solid. High Elves, again, with Mizzy Huku and his dots, he can kind of do okay. Cage, pretty solid character still. They're all okay. They're not going to be shooting you up in arena rankings. They're not going to be unbeatable on defense in Clan Wars. But they can be difficult if you've used all your strong squads and you go up against these guys. The Wild Elves, they're, they're not horrible. People use Wild Elves quite effectively. They're great in Raid. Clan Wars, they're a good defense team. They have a lot of healing. They're, they're a bit scattered on which characters you use. Personally, I use Tiliana, Gloriana, and Lucky, Sindario, and Colonel. That's my personal, but I've seen different variants a lot. So yeah, you got Argon. I mean, if you're building a full Archon squad, you always pick Argon over Steris. That's just the way it is. So that's the only reason he's up in medium. You got the Druids. They're okay. Soothsayer, just a staple. She's a, been a solid character for a long time. Very niche use. If you're versing a team with lots of debuffs, we can apply a lot of debuffs. She's right up your alley. Mabe, to be honest, probably could be moved up to hot. She was in hot. Like I said, I, unfortunately, I'm not using the list I finalized. So I did put her up in hot. I think she does belong up there. She's still a super overpowered character. And I feel like when the Druids get a rework, if there's a leadership ability for the Druids, etc., she could become a lot more powerful. Balthazar, not really used at all because he's just... The only real use he had was with the Archons and then Roynar came along and shot him away. And the demons are just so... They're just shit to be honest, and he doesn't fit in. So, yeah, he's a good character. <coughs> good character, though. Potential to be great. And Phoenix, she's okay. Not like she used to be, because they made her balanced. But 
her original form where she used to be aimed. She was quite powerful. She'd be high if she still had that form. But yeah, that's where she belongs, I believe. Moving up to hot, we've got Colonel Tiliana Gloriana, the King Rat Goblin Anus, whatever his name is, Rock. Sooner, Sacrif, Azario, Blood Emperor, Swamp Killer, Bellara, Seven Knives, and Lucky. These characters, you've got them awesome. Oh, you, you're in, on a good stretch right there because these characters are amazing. The Wild Elves, Gloriana with the leader. These three, personally, I like these three the best. I think Tiliana does ridiculous damage. Colonel is more of a support tank than an actual tank, but he, he's needed when paired up with gloriana and i believe it is him i'm not too sure i'm just going off the top of my head that applies a defensive buff it's pretty strong it does pretty pretty good mitigation gloriana just a crazy healer the fact that she can't heal herself is her only downfall but if she could she would be up the top the goblins like i said just kind of okay all around rock really shines He's one of those characters that only ever drops down a tier or then moves back up because people always find a use for Rock. Sooner, Blue Beast, what more can I say? She does ridiculous damage with AoE Team Sacrif. She's a great healer. Highest cleansing in the game. Her strength, though, is the Archons. Without the Archons, she's not getting her full use. Azario, again, great healer. Blood Emperor, yep. Yeah. Swamp Killer, Bolara, Seven Knives. These three, obviously obviously you need to pair them with Denea. Seven Knives actually has a bit more flexibility. You can put him in other places because he's not restricted to the Barbarian faction. But these three will do work. Swamp Killer is a glass cannon, the strongest glass cannon in the game. Bolara, probably one of the strongest support units in the game. Considering you have Denea as your leader, Seven Knives Lockdown can execute just yeah lots of damage lucky and yeah it's lucky lucky I, I can never see lucky dropping her kit and because she isn't faction restricted she just has a lot she can offer to a team and you can normally find a way to work her in to most teams she's just such an efficient healer and you do use her a lot in raids and when Tomb of Horrors rework comes along and raids come out, the higher level raids, I feel like her use may increase if they don't bring out healers of equal value to her. And I'm talking healers that aren't restricted to their faction, that can just do tremendous work. So Azariel, for example, Lucky, they're always going to be awesome because, yeah, you can put them wherever you want, really. Moving up to Spicy. We've got Tyros, Magnus, Wukong, and Artis. Artis, obviously, because he's the leader of the, the Golden characters. And the Golden army has fallen a bit. You do not see them as much because they can be beaten by a lot of teams now. However, the Golden army is probably one of the few factions which has re relevance in every area of the game still. You can use them in clan wars. You can use them in TOH. You can use them clearing raids. You can use them arena, anywhere. You've got these characters. They're going to serve you well. However, their defensive capabilities has decreased a lot because they've just been characters that have been built to combat these dark elves, barbarians. Blue beasts have a chance of beating them but they're still just a solid faction. Wukong. Now, Wukong could probably be put in hot. I am putting him in putting him in spicy as a prediction ranking. January, I believe, is the month of the Lunar Festival, which is the festival which celebrates the Beastmen in the game. Originally, it introduced Wukong and Pigboy to the game. And... I'm pretty sure Wukong will be seeing his leadership ability come into the game during the Lunar Festival, I believe. Don't quote me on it, okay? If it doesn't happen, don't blame me. But if it does happen, I very much believe he will become one of the strongest characters in the game. you got Magnus, best tank in the game. Tyros, he's just a steroid version of Mabe without the lockdown. He just does a lot of damage. His passive is stupid. He resets initiative. He's quick. He's just a bunch of mess. And I hate versing him. So these characters, if you've got these characters, you, uh, yeah, yeah, good. You're doing well. 
Next up, we have the newest ranking to the spice list. We have the Black Peppers. These characters are top. Get them. Get them. Go out of your way to get them. We've got Roina and Denea. We'll start with Denea. Denea is ridiculously overpowered. She is a monster created from the reign of the Golden Army. It was a solution to a problem, but became out of control. She can carry you through so much, mainly arena, PvP. She is a monster. She does fall off in areas such as Raid. I'm sure you could use her. Personally, I wouldn't suggest it. The sustainability of the Barbarian team is very low because they are stronger without heals. The more hits they're taking, the more rage stacks they're getting, the more damage they're doing, and they will blast through your enemies. So she is a, an amazing character. She does a lot for the Barbarian team. She is not horribly hard to get. A beginner could start working, a new player could start working at getting her past level 28, I believe, when they can join a clan and start raiding. Once you start earning clan tokens, yeah, you could start going for her. And the Barbarian faction as a whole, apart from Seven Knives, isn't a difficult faction to farm. Balara, super easy to farm. Swamp Killer, super easy to farm. The healer, I forget who you throw on as a healer, but again, you could throw on Azariel. Azariel is mainly used in the Barbarian team. So, yeah, she's just ridiculous in how strong she is and what she can give the Barbarians and what the Barbarians do. Next up, we have Roina. Roina is probably one of the most versatile characters in the game. He has a ridiculously strong leadership ability, being able to lock down casters and healers. He can reset initiative. He can, I think he can reset initiative. It's but yeah, he removes buffs as well. He can be put on so many teams. Blue artists use him. Blue beasts use him. Dark elves use him. He he can almost be fit anywhere because he just offers so much. He's not restricted to the Dark Elves. His kit is crazy. And yeah, I mean, look in your arena, look at the top rankings. Most teams will have him in it because why not? The only team that really doesn't use him are the Barbarians. But I'm sure if they could, they'd throw him in there because he just offers so much. So yeah, that is the tier list. These are your characters within the game. If I'm missing someone, I always miss someone out. I just get these these pictures from a folder in the Age of Magic something on the internet. I don't know. I don't know things about computers. But yeah, that's where I get the photos from. So if there's someone missing, I apologize. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you're around the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.